word spirit in the Old Testament is the Hebrew word ruach. The very first time it was used, it was used for man. It was used for the fact that man came alive. Genesis 2, 7. The breath and man became a living soul. Man came alive. It was used for that fact. The word breath of life is the word ruach, breath of life. Now in the Greek is the word pneuma, pneumatology. It's the same word translated from there. It is used symbolically and it is also used to explain life, to explain life. So when you say the spirit of God, that you are saying the life of God, the life of God. Because we said breath, because in the physical, we say he is not breathing. The man is not breathing. What are we saying? He's gone. When we say he's still breathing, what are we saying? His life is still inside him. Breath is life. Spirit is life. So when we say you have the spirit of God, what we're saying is you have the life of God. The breath, the ruach, or the pneuma, the breath, the life of God. So breath or breath speaks of life. When you say the spirit of God, you're referring to the life of God. That's why you can't say you are born again and you don't have the life of God. That's crazy. How many of you have ever seen life before? You have ever seen life? You don't see life. You only see the activities of life. Jesus said, you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going. So is everyone that is born of God. You don't see life, but you see its activity. So the spirit is the evidence of activity. The spirit is the evidence of activity. Someone said, the word spirit is that which issues forth animating force. That's very apt. So, whatever activities or things, whatever makes things come alive is the spirit. Did you follow that? Whatever makes things come alive, activities, things, anything that makes things come alive is the spirit. So, the word spirit, therefore, is to speak of life. We will see the activities of life. But you can't say, I have his life in a bottle. This is the life of God in a bottle. That's madness. It doesn't make sense. And you're using the life of God to fry chicken? This is the life of God in a bottle. It doesn't make sense. It means you don't even know what life is. Because if you know what life is, you can't say life is in a bottle. So there's a display of illiteracy in that statement. There's a shallow, shallowness of knowledge exhibited in that statement. Because life cannot be contained in a bottle. Or God in a bottle. God in a bottle. Doing what there? Why will God leave human beings and enter bottle? Did he miss road? <laughs> These are the things I see and they cause trouble for me. Why will God miss road and enter bottle? And then you have to be taking portion from the bottle to touch the human being that God is trying to get at. So when God was coming for men, he couldn't reach men because men are too powerful. But bottle at least is little powerful. So God said, let me enter here for some time. So men be taking small, small and be dabbing yourselves. Rubbish. Christians are carrying bottle. They can't sleep without bottle. When they are traveling, they have become Juno Habalis without training. Have balance without training. They can't travel without bottle. They can't sleep without bottle. So what, what that teaching has succeeded in doing is multiplying idols in the hands of believers. It's actually a, 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 a sly way of introducing idolatry. You carry handkerchief and tie on your neck to go for interview. And the people are wondering, did you enjoy your neck? You say, no. So why do you have handkerchief on your neck? You say, no, it's just part of the dressing. Uh -uh, this dressing is not correct. Please go. This interview, you have failed. How can you be coming like this with something on your neck? Handkerchief is not to be tied on the neck. Or you're going for an interview, you carry anointing oil and you rub your eyebrows. And they say, what, why are your eyebrows shining? Is there something about your eyebrows? You say, no, 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 it's just oil. Oil for what? You say, no, just leave it there. <laughs> oil on your eyebrow. It's idolatry. The use of anything external to replace God is idol worship. Whether cloth, whether bottle, whether oil, whatever it is, they're all idols. Because now they take your eyes from Jesus and your eyes now are on those elements. It's a very, very, very sl slimy way of introducing idol worship and giving believers talisman. You want to pray, you carry a bottle of oil. Father, I know you hear me because you're inside this bottle. How are you different from those Indians? Those Indians whose God couldn't help them during COVID. So they carry the God and throw on the road. Nonsense, idiot. You're occupying space for nothing in my house. You're not paying rent, yet you're occupying space. And you have never paid rent. When it was time for you to play your part in this partnership, you failed. Out of the road. <laughs> Homeless. <laughs> Homeless. <laughs> 
homeless. The idols are homeless. <laughs> more idols will be homeless. The more this gospel grows, all those God in a bottle will be thrown on the streets. All those handkerchiefs will be thrown away. People carrying jerry cans of olive oil to church so that it can be prayed for because that is God in a jerry can. Jerry can. God in a jerry can. Holy water. God in holy water. So God cannot enter human beings. He has to enter elements. Then human beings will be tapping God from elements. What a miscalculation. What religion does is it renders your IQ dull so you don't ask the right questions. What revelation knowledge does, it makes you sharp so you ask intelligent questions. And in those religious institutions, they tell you you must not question it. Because if you question it, God will be angry. So shut up and don't think. Just zombie rise. But God said, come let us reason. Exactly. Let's reason. And in reasoning, you ask intelligent questions. In reasoning, you become logical. You begin to, to ask. You know, okay, God, come, come, come. Why is this like this? Because naturally, it should be like this. And God is not afraid to answer. God will say, okay, so this is why it's like this. Ken Hagin said, when he had visions of Jesus, how he knew it was Jesus, was that when Jesus appeared to him in a vision and told him something, he told him, give me four scriptures. And then Jesus will tell him, because I am Jesus, I will give you five. One, two, three, four, five. And all of them confirmed that instruction. That's how he knew it was Jesus. Not because he appeared there with, uh, with Bob Marley hair. I am Jesus. You get out. Yeah, man. <laughs> Say, give me scriptures if you are really Jesus. Like the Jesus who appeared to you, appeared to mama, and said to her, I am Jesus, your savior. And she said, wonderful. Then to spoil matters, he went and shot himself in the leg. He said to her, I am Jesus, your savior. And she says he was shining, bright light, everything. You know, the devil appears like an angel of light, shining exactly like the Jesus you see on posters. Because he can't come in another form. He knows that the one that have been marketed is those ones on signboards and posters. You know that fine Jesus from America? Something Powell, Abby. Something Powell. That fine boy who is a movie actor. He went to Kenya. They were shouting, Jesus. He ran away and said, I'm not Jesus. I'm just a movie actor. <laughs> I'm a movie actor. I acted Jesus to get some more money for my pocket. Please don't call me Jesus. <laughs> and that is the picture in many homes. Jesus, our Savior. The silent listener to every conversation. Religion is very wicked. <laughs> so mama said to him. Mama said she's waiting for him. He says, I am Jesus, your Savior. She said, oh. Then she's trying to kneel down in worship. Then he shoots himself in the leg. I will die for you. So mama said, but the Bible says you have died for me. All the shiny started falling. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> he became ugly and left. She stood up and said, what? What was that? He said, and the Lord said, if you didn't know the scriptures, that thing will have messed around with you and oppressed you. But because you know the scriptures, it couldn't stand the presence of light. No scripture. Don't be seeing dreams and visions. Things are flying like this. He said, I saw an angel. He was just doing like this. Like this means forward ever, backward never. <laughs> Glory. Though an angel, <laughs> I don't worship us everywhere. Somebody's coming to church, he carries a jerry can of oil. What are you going for? He said, I'm going to church. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> to church with oil. <laughs> jerry can of oil is church a market. No, <laughs> it is for blessing. <laughs> when they say, now we want to pray for the oil, he carry jerry can put for head. <laughs> My yoke is easy. <laughs> So that means the bottle, if God is in a bottle, then the bottle has to become a human being. If God is in a bottle, that bottle then has to become a human being. Because you don't see life, but you can see the activities. So that's why it's the word spirit or the word life. 